In this five minute tip, we will introduce some basic definitions and concepts used in organizational risk management. In the next few minutes, we will define risk and some basic risk management terms. We will also provide some illustrative examples that will help in understanding these terms and concepts. We will end the session with the basic risk calculation model. Risk is the level of impact on organizational operations, organizational assets, or individuals resulting from the operation of an information system given the potential impact of a threat and the likelihood of that threat occurring. Risk can be thought of as positive, but is normally thought of as a negative event that can adversely impact your organization. Risk exists in everything and cannot be eliminated, but it can be managed. The basic formula for risk is based on the premise that for a risk to exist, a threat must be matched with a vulnerability. At the basic level, if one of these two factors does not exist, there cannot be risk. That is, if there is no threat, but a vulnerability exists, there is no risk. And if there is a threat, but no vulnerability, there is no risk. This is known as the base, basic risk expression and is expanded on greatly as you understand more about risk management. The following are ISACA provided definitions. Risk capacity is the objective amount of loss an enterprise can tolerate without its continued existence being called into question. This is normally the maximum amount of risk that an organization can assume without risking the existence of the organization itself. This level of risk could destroy the organization. Risk appetite is the amount of risk on a broad level that an entity is willing to accept in pursuit of its mission. This is the normal level of risk that an organization can comfortably accept in its day-to-day -day operations. Risk tolerance is the acceptable level of variation that management is willing to allow for a particular risk as the enterprise pursues its objectives. This is a level of risk that is above the organization's risk appetite, but below the risk capacity that an organization may take on in the pursuit of a substantial goal. Normally, organizations will not remain in the level of risk tolerance for long. This coffee example serves to further explain the terms risk appetite, risk tolerance, and risk capacity. Risk appetite. If we assume you like coffee, we can begin by giving you a cup of coffee that is filled up, but not to the point you can't walk around the room freely without effort. Without many problems, you can move around without fear of spilling your coffee. This is like the risk appetite level for an organization. For risk tolerance, now to expand further, let's say you don't like black coffee. To give you a drink you like, we add cream and sugar. This will increase the level in your cup, but you can still move around with relative ease. But you'll need to be more careful not to spill. Additionally, over the next few minutes, you will drink enough coffee that the level will be back to the level of appetite level. This is like the tolerance level for an organization. The cream and sugar are worth the additional risk, and the additional level will not be long term. Risk capacity. Let's say we're not paying attention when filling your coffee and fill it all the way to the top of the cup. It will be almost impossible to move around the room without spilling. This is an organization risk capacity level, a level that should be avoided. The next set of terms are also defined by Hasaka. Inherent risk is the risk level or exposure without taking into account the actions that management has taken or might take, as in implementing controls. This is risk without you doing anything to bring its level down. You have not applied controls or any other forms of mitigation. Risk mitigation is the management of risk through the use of countermeasures and controls. These are the things that you do to reduce the risk level. 
Residual risk is the remaining risk after management has implemented a risk response. This is the risk that remains after controls and mitigations have been put in place. Remember, there's always some level of risk, and that may be expressed as residual risk. The basic residual risk model is that residual risk is inherent risk plus the impact of controls in reducing that risk. The remaining risk is residual risk. In this session, we've defined risk and some risk management terms, presented the coffee example of risk appetite, tolerance, and capacity, and presented the residual risk model. To ensure you do not miss any new video presentations, please subscribe to this channel. Also, please like and comment below. This presentation is part of the Cyber Recon RMF Lab. In addition to these videos, the lab uses multimodal instruction to drive home the RMF process through the use of videos, learning games, practice quizzes, weekly instructor interaction, an updated RMF book, an updated RMF lab guide, and hands-on experience in a simulated live environment where you practice the techniques you're learning. For a limited time, we're allowing full access to all of the resources available in Step 1 of the Cyber Recon RMF Lab. Click the tile on the right to understand more about the RMF Lab and see how you can gain access to Step 1.